Okay, good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we continue with our study on uh, the subject of faith. We've completed nearly three fourths, I think. So in case we um, are able to finish before time, then you can take some of the class uh, times for your assignments later on. But let's see, let's see how it goes. Depends on you know how many questions uh, you have and all of that. So uh, we can pray this morning and then we'll, we'll continue. Let's pray together. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, uh, Lord, uh, towards each one of us. Thank you for being in our lives. Thank you for leading us continually, strengthening us, Lord. And Father, uh, as we, uh, Lord, spend time in your word, we pray that, Lord, you will continue to lead us, Lord. Give us understanding, give us wisdom, um, help us, Lord, to apply whatever we are learning in our lives that we may be able to fulfill the purpose of God for our lives, O oh God. Father, we surrender each one into your hands. We speak blessings uh, upon um, all of us, O oh God, all uh, faculty, all students. And Father, we uh, pray, God, that we will experience your presence, uh, Lord, uh, at all times. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man. Okay, uh, so it's uh, really a joy to see your enthusiasm. I want to appreciate all the students for, uh, first of all, the assignments and you've completed it. And even the e-learning students, uh, you know, they were posting in the discussions, where is the assignment? Where is the assignment? They're so eager. So I had to push myself. Uh, it's a different format, but I had to push myself to get the uh, assignments posted for them also. So uh, everyone is following along, everyone is um, working hard, and uh, that makes it nicer for us to teach. So please keep that uh, enthusiasm level high. And uh, uh, today we will talk about um, faith, but you know how to really apply our faith. So in the last uh, week, we talked about using our faith. What was the main way in which we can use our faith or apply our faith? Last week, what did we learn? Just flip the pages, turn the pages and have a look. The power of confession. Okay, the power of confession, the power of declaration. We said that um, faith is in the heart, but one way of expressing it, one way of affirming it, one way of holding on to our faith is to speak our faith. And I told us to get a copy of that book, Speak Your Faith, uh, and uh, begin to learn how to make declarations. It's a huge part of the Christian life to be able to speak our faith. Okay? So we need to learn early uh, and uh, keep building ourselves up in confessing the word of God. Uh, we also saw that when we declare, what we are doing is we are in agreement with what God says. What God says about me, what God says about um, different circumstances, what God says about uh, um, you know his, uh, his nature. So we are affirming all these things through the word of our confession. So that's the reason one must do this. And we said that uh, though confession is uh, powerful, we should avoid the attitude where we become proud. Because, uh, you know, when we, we confess, we are bold in our confession. And the Bible says we need to be bold in our confession. Uh, we are confident that God will do it. But there is a thin line between uh, arrogance and boldness so we should not slip into um, arrogance and uh, you know be uh, like defiant is is the word uh, so confession must be uh, in in the boundaries of god's word and we must still carry on with an honorable attitude so these are the things that we learned about confession so after that we said that uh, faith faith is there in the heart but how to demonstrate it the second way is action Faith without works is dead, James says. Uh, if anyone says, you know, uh, show me your faith, uh, I will show you my works, or uh, show me your works, I will show you my faith. These two things are not separate. It doesn't work like that. So a person who has faith should have actions. 
If we have faith, action should follow. Otherwise, uh, if we just say, no, faith is in my heart. Um, I have no actions. Faith is just in my heart. I'm just waiting on the Lord. It doesn't work like that. Faith and actions go hand in hand. And uh, that is something that we must uh, understand. So we said faith and confession, faith and action. So we'll see. There are few more um, things that can help us express our faith. What are these things? That's uh, what we are going to take time in. So today we will look at praise. Praise. Okay. And we will look at patience. How one needs to be patient in order to um, see or receive the promise. And then, of course, uh, determination. Determination is uh, an attitude where we, we are holding on, like never give up. That is determination. So these are all uh, consistent attitudes that we need in ourselves to release the faith that we are carrying in our hearts. So let's look at praise. We talked about the life of Abraham. If you recall, we said that uh, Abraham waited upon the Lord. Abraham waited for one promise for, you know, uh, like 25 years. But as he was waiting, we saw the steps of faith, isn't it? First, he believed. Then he counted uh, God, uh, you know, faithful, that God will do it. Then he did not waver in faith. Uh, so we saw all these steps. He became stronger. But one of the things that we said is he gave thanks to God. He gave thanks to God. So thanking God was in the journey of faith. So he came to one point in his uh, faith where he was sure that, yes, God will do it. It's a matter of time. So he went from uh, praying Maybe he went from praying prayers like, God, help me uh, to believe you, all that. He went from those kind of prayers to thanking God, where he said, God, thank you. I believe you've already done it. You're going to um, uh, perform this uh, in, in our lives. And so he went to thanking God. So thanking and praising God is uh, what we do when we are, we are convinced. Convinced or persuaded. Convinced or persuaded. So in our faith walk, initially, there is that uh, place where we are still, you know, not clear, where we are still wondering, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Slowly giving our hearts to the promise of God and becoming strong in that. But once our hearts are settled, right, we need to also come to a place of praising God thanking God. Now that also is an expression of our faith. So imagine in a tough time, if we are praising God, um, that shows that we believe God is uh, stronger than that situation, that God is uh, more powerful than what we are going through. Uh, have you ever seen anyone praising God in a difficult time? Yes, yeah, I think all of us have. We have seen, you know, people who are um, like in our own lives, maybe, you know, our, our parents or our uh, spiritual leaders. We've seen their life example. Even in a tough situation, they choose to praise God. Now, that is an expression of faith. And it's really, uh, you know, it, it's so powerful, isn't it? When we witness somebody doing that. Now, in the Bible, Acts chapter 17 is a very good example because we find there that uh, Paul and Silas, they went to ministry to a place called Philippi. And in Philippi, um, all they did was cast out a demon. They went, they cast out a demon. But when they cast out the demon, uh, through that demon, okay, in, in, a, in a slave girl, there was a man who was making money out of her because she was doing fortune telling. And uh, he was able to make money. But the moment the demon left, she was no longer able to uh, do that fortune telling. So he was so angry with Paul and Silas. Uh, you know, he went and complained and the authorities came, caught them, put them in the prison. Can you imagine? They did a good work, isn't it? So they did a good work. But 
where are they finally they're in the prison so in the prison what do you think when we uh, get into we're doing the right thing but you know we are being put into um, a difficult situation even though we did the right thing what can be our response what can be the thoughts in our minds yeah can't hear you anger anger okay okay why did this happen okay so we may be angry you're right what else what else could be the normal natural response questions depression yeah you feel sad um you know or maybe i don't know if people ask questions like why god why me you know these kind of questions people may ask so this is the normal natural response that one may have but we read uh, that paul and silas in the prison what were they doing that to in the midnight and they had been beaten badly beaten chained their hands their feet okay it's a terrible situation anybody in that situation will say why am i here i did the right thing but why am i here but what did they both do the bible says in the midnight hour they were uh, uh, they were praying they were praising god they were thanking god can you imagine can you imagine you know how can somebody praise god in a very very difficult situation because they carried faith in their hearts that's what faith does when faith believes yeah this is a tough situation but it will work out for the glory of god god has a greater purpose god can deliver us then what happens instead of our normal natural reactions like we said anger depression questions don't know whether initially they had those thoughts we don't know but ultimately both of them they were singing in the in the prison that all the prisoners could even hear them praising god have you heard that song you, uh, i raise a hallelujah yeah we all have heard that song it's also translated into many languages but uh, uh, you see even in that song so beautifully they have listed it out that uh, um, in all kinds of difficult situations i raise a hallelujah meaning praise praise because praise demonstrates faith if there's no praise instead of that if uh, we are singing you know let's say oh how horrible my situation is so horrible you're talking about the tough situation it shows what we are carrying in our hearts there's no faith there's um, complain complaint grumbling um, the people of israel they are the best example of grumblers god gave so much but they were grumbling about the things that they left behind in egypt Okay, but god was not happy with them right so there are two attitudes uh but the attitude that one who is carrying faith in their hearts requires is praise praise should be there on our lips where we say god we thank you you are going to take us through this um, uh, problem god we thank you you are able to deliver us from every work of the evil one god we thank you because you have promised in your word that you are our covenant healer so what when we begin to speak like this god we thank you because you are the god of increase you will give the increase we thank you you are the god of hope you give all hope to us so when our prayers are like this all of them are based on scripture what happens is we are praising god in the midst of a difficult situation and that shows that we have faith in our hearts and that was the testimony of abraham abraham gave thanks to god before isaac was born so in the waiting there was thanking there was praising okay so uh, that is something that we can develop uh, we can practice now what what uh, any uh, hindrances do you think there can be any any um, uh, problems in praising god when we are trusting him any issues that we may need to overcome when does it become difficult
okay angelin um, says uh, frustration yeah sometimes we can be so frustrated right like i'm doing all the right things it's still not working what's wrong maybe i'm doing something wrong you know you get into all these things but faith faith will journey with god but once we are convinced no this is what god said he will do it no matter what is happening around me when faith gets to that place the next thing is praises thanksgiving okay so we have to cross all this uh maybe emotional uh, i think emotional uh, emotions can be a hindrance if we don't know how to manage them isn't it because our emotions as a first reaction we may uh, have these these things like anger and frustration and depression okay but we have to overcome um have you uh, seen the um, there is a um, quote by smith wigglesworth Uh, in our uh, dining area uh, it says that uh, uh, what i am not moved by what i feel or i don't i'm not moved by what i see but i am moved by what i believe so uh, in the natural realm we, there are things that we can see there are things that we can feel we must not let those things dictate our lives we must only let what we believe dictate our lives did we understand yeah so we are not moved by what we see what we feel sometimes even our emotions can be so um it can be deceiving like let's say for example uh, you know we we want to do what uh, god wants us to do or uh, i i was giving you an example for ministry if there are ministry opportunities and we are serving god somewhere you know uh, in our emotions we may we may say that i don't feel like uh, you know i don't feel like serving today i don't feel like praying for anyone maybe supernatural hour and we are saying i don't feel like praying for anyone you know why are they going on saying pray for somebody pray for so don't go by the emotional feeling because feeling will come and go if we make choices on the basis of our emotional feelings uh, somewhere we we give that a higher place than the faith in our hearts so there are times whether we feel like it or we don't feel like it we have to do it in, you know we need to serve god whether we feel like it or we don't feel like it we have to do the right thing right we may not feel like you know blessing someone or being kind to someone or uh, you know uh, giving to someone uh, but if that is the right thing to do over and above our feelings we need to step into that same thing applies for praise sometimes maybe when we are sick we don't feel like praising god we we feel upset we feel you know like uh, one of you said depressed don't go by feelings go by faith so faith will acknowledge that god god can heal me right so then you go by faith and maybe you begin to thank the lord or begin to sing a song uh, and praise the lord okay so uh, sometimes our feelings can be the issue we uh, decide more on our feelings than our faith okay now uh, also as we grow in the lord uh, we will understand that there are certain feelings of the spirit man Okay, so it's okay to give in to the feelings of the spirit man. So the spirit man um, will will feel a sense of um, um, you know joy, peace, uh, or um, a sense of uh, urgency. So there is a difference: the natural feelings and the spiritual feelings. So we need to recognize if they are spiritual feelings. then we can go ahead with it but if it's only a natural feeling then be little careful about that so sometimes when we go by just our natural feeling uh, that may hinder our praises uh, but we must praise anyway no matter how we feel you know get into praising god so that's a little bit about um a uh, praises uh, but any thoughts about praises any questions about praising
how come we can praise god when things are going uh, bad how 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 can we praise him any any idea wouldn't it be wrong or wouldn't it be uh, like we are trying to pretend or something like that okay it depends on what we are showing from inside okay so uh, though it is difficult i think we are going by our belief right like we are believing yeah so we are believing and that is why we are praising okay fine so that's genuine we are believing so we are praising yeah any any other reason sister if you know who ah, yes sister gertrude yeah yeah sister if you know who you are trusting who your god is and yeah. his nature and character you will not doubt yes yes thank you for that so that yes. that's what i had in my mind also see the thing about god is any time we praise him it's correct because think about heaven the bible says every moment angels uh, the elders what are they doing they are they are worshiping god and they are saying holy 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 you know uh, and uh, he is worthy so he has always been worthy he will always be worthy so you, we can't go wrong when we praise god because no matter what any single one of us are going through he is still worthy he is still holy he is just still just he is still good he is still faithful so uh, praising is one thing it's always appropriate any moment we praise god is still worthy so it can't be wrong you can't go wrong with praising god okay so with that in our hearts we can just say god uh, no matter what i am going through you are worthy right now you are worthy i join with the hosts of heaven who who are uh, bowing down before you i join with them and i say holy you are holy you are holy the bible says every moment they are crying out holy 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 okay so this is uh, pastor roshan's forte but i won't get into that um, but you see why is it that they are crying out holy 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 all the time ha huh? yeah because he is holy that's true but all the time the bible revelation says every moment fine there's no sorrow there's no problems in heaven that's why they are crying out so then we should not is it because there are sorrows problems on the earth yeah he is holy we know but why every minute every moment what is the need to keep saying holy 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 all the time he is worthy of it okay sure he is worthy of it good yeah anything else okay we can look at it like this we can look at it like this see every time god reveals something about himself okay think about this whenever in our journey also we read the bible and uh, we we suddenly experience or we understand something about god you know maybe we are reading an incident about jesus and how, how jesus healed so what happens in that moment is we understand something about god so i'm just going to use the word revelation it's already there jesus is like this but that day we understood that oh jesus is like this so you know how our natural response is when you find out something great you say wow isn't it so it's something like you know god's goodness and greatness is uh, immense immeasurable every time we see a part of his nature something in us says wow you got it so that is why in heaven as they are looking at god as they are looking at uh, you know the the greatness of god the cry holy 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 is holy is like that one of those wows that they can't help it 
but each moment they have to praise god because he is so great uh, that you can't keep quiet his goodness his greatness is being revealed moment by moment and um, even the hosts of heaven cannot keep silent they have to acknowledge what they are experiencing and so they just bow down before god and uh, you know they cry out holy same thing for us why do we worship why do we praise when we see how good he is how great he is so the revelation of god is important for worship so the more i know who he is what is the meaning of his name you know so many things uh sometimes you just feel like um, those of you who can play an instrument you just feel like strumming a music a tune those of us who can sing we just feel like singing those of us who can paint we just feel like painting because uh he deserves it it's a response it's a sort of a uh, design response that all of us have to worship god we, we can't hold back okay it's because of who god is and the revelation that we get about his goodness that we begin to worship him we begin to praise him okay so um yeah that's a little bit about uh, praise and how praise is also a demonstration of our faith in god uh, so if there are any thoughts or questions we can answer that and uh, then i will move on to the next one here okay um sanjay says uh, we can either worry which comes from a place of fear or we can worship which comes from a place of strength in the spirit that's true lucy says we have been created to glorify him and uh, sister gertrude says um he's enthroned on our praises okay he's enthroned on our praises yeah true so the word of god has to say that so when we praise god it's like um we are making him bigger and bigger in our in our uh, uh, lives okay so um any other thoughts about praise before we move on to um patience okay i think uh, it's uh, fairly simple uh, we are familiar with it so we can then just jump to the next chapter here which is regarding patience so we said uh, if there is faith in our hearts one is speak it second is do it third is praise uh, now the fourth one is patience uh, we talked about how uh sometimes what god promises happens immediately sometimes uh, there is a delay in the uh fulfillment of whatever god has promised now there are so many things about that concept uh, we we won't we have discussed it you know why is there a delay is it god is it us so there can be so many reasons why there is uh, some sort of a delay in a promise being fulfilled now as we are waiting for the fulfillment of the promise okay uh when we give up we lose have you ever watched uh and you know in the olympics uh, or any other uh, major sports event an athlete they're running okay uh and everyone is running but maybe a little close to the finish line some of them just stop okay they just stop um for whatever reason but when somebody stops without touching the finish line they technically have not completed the race okay so all that practice for the event and uh, all that hard work to go to the event and finally participate is actually not bearing fruit because they never finished we don't finish till we finish you know what i mean 
so participating is okay but why is all, why are all the players there or why are all the athletes there they want to finish so those of them those of uh, uh, you know the athletes who maybe they had a sprain or you know they fell okay something happened they fell but some for whatever reason they just stop that will not allow them to um, you know um, complete what they were looking at all of those you know years that they were practicing for the race now even the bible teaches us there's something that god uh, expects on our part to receive or walk into what he has planned for us what are those things there are two things um hebrew 6 and verse 12 it is there in our notes you can look at it it is chapter 14 it says that you do not become sluggish but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises so two things faith and patience faith we all understand faith yeah you need to have strong faith build your faith nurture your faith all that is great but when we are journeying there is one more element that is called as patience patience is to um just endure okay? endure uh or in other words not giving up so we can have faith but if we don't have patience even then it is difficult for us to walk into the promises of god and that's what the writer of the hebrews is saying he was saying look at those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of god so think about you know uh, the uh, israelites they did not have much patience so to the extent that god said you know what you will never go i will not send you into the promised land let the next generation go so there were people like uh, joshua caleb with a new attitude they had a different attitude from this older generation older generation known for grumbling disobedience lack of patience but the new generation known for their faith known for their patience so uh, this young generation they also would have waited a long time before they actually entered the promised land so faith is one thing but the ability to hold on the ability to be strong in god and wait till you see the results that is patience that is also needed so a combination of the two faith and patience is necessary to inherit the promises of god now tell me when we are waiting for god's uh, promise to be fulfilled what are some challenges that we may face let's say it's taking a long time so what naturally what what uh, what does it that we go through sense of insecurity yeah insecurity doubt we may start questioning ourselves did god really say did i hear it right maybe i'm not good enough maybe i'm not doing the right thing okay fine insecurity doubt that's um uh you know that's um a space it's a little bit of a dangerous place uh that if you are not careful enough then we can slip into that great yeah what else anything else which can be a struggle when we are waiting hopelessness yeah you lose all hope you have nothing to look forward to you know if god does let him do <coughs> have you ever heard people say that if he does let him do if he doesn't do let him not do it's okay i will be faithful it's like saying we are more righteous than god you know uh yeah so hopelessness no expectation that can happen when we are waiting for long time 
Tell me, what do we face? Nobody has waited, is it? We don't seem to know any answers regarding waiting. Worries. Uh, yes, sister? Sister, I'm still waiting for a promise. Okay, so what are some challenges? Because actually, uh, I had uh, a vision and God had promised and uh, uh, he also gave me an opportunity, but I missed on that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I'm still waiting for that promise. Okay, so then what are some challenges that you um, face as you wait on God's yeah, sometimes promise? Sometimes you feel whether you're doing the right thing, whether it will happen. Because mm, it's questions. been so long. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, knowing our God and His faithfulness, uh, I believe it will happen. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, j just questions and maybe even as um, you know, we heard here insecurity, doubt, these things can happen. Anything else when we are waiting upon the Lord? Yeah, correct. So people who are around us, can, yeah, they they can also make us. Um, they can discourage us, right? Yeah. So that also can happen. So you see, we have to be so strong, right? When we are convinced about God's promise, we have to be so strong uh, in holding on to God and not give up. So these are all the challenges that one may face when we are waiting. So look at uh, Hebrews 10, verse 35. It says, uh, therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So the writer is saying, don't cast away your confidence, or in other words, don't give up. Okay, don't give up. It's when we don't give up that we actually receive the promises of God. If we give up, you know, like that athlete ran so well, very close to the finish line, but they give up. No point. Because you're close to the finish line, but not touch the finish line. So giving up is never helpful. We will not get what God intends for us. So the writer of the Hebrews is saying, don't, do not cast away your confidence. So both um, faith as well as patience is required. Uh, and uh, to keep moving on this way, we can look at, you know, people like um, Abraham, how they trusted God and the things that they did so, um, you know, they, uh, they kept their faith in God. They thanked God. Okay. These are all things that they did to hold on to the promise of God. Uh, they, did not, they did not let go um, of their uh, affirmation or their confession of what God is going to do. So, even though we may not tell in front of people, right? Like, for example, in the Bible, you have Joseph, right? So Joseph has a dream, and in that dream he sees that uh, you know all his brothers are um, the sheaves are bow. Uh, um, I don't exactly know the words, but then they are bowing down before him, and uh, he uh, is sort of exalted in the midst of his brothers. Now this is what God is telling Joseph: I'm going to do this in your life in the future. Confession. The confession that he could have had is, yes, God is going to uh, raise me up. God will lift me up among my brothers. Okay. Now, because we are saying confession, it doesn't mean that, you know, we go around telling people that, hey, you know what, this is, um, God is going to lift me up. I'm going to become greater than you. Is it correct? It is actually correct because God has revealed through a dream, but it is not wise to go and make confessions, you know, before people and tell them, this is what God is going to do. This is what God is going to do. Because people may not be in that place of faith 
where you are so it's not about telling people keep it in your heart you have that confession personally and you say yes one day the lord will raise me up according to what he has shown me so also being wise with our confession uh when we are waiting what may happen as uh, you know diksha just said is people around us may say what is this why are you doing all this uh, maybe you should do something else you're wasting your time so when there are people around us uh, and then imagine we start telling them no you know what god is going to raise me up god is going to do this they may or may not believe our words so when we say confession hold on to your confession but uh, maybe we can keep it personal right uh, and maybe we can we can just speak to ourselves and say yes my faith is in god and god will do it and uh, not be unwise to go and keep telling people when we tell people they may laugh at us or you know in the case of joseph what happened his brothers became jealous of him imagine if he had not gone and told them they would have not known but when he went and did that they got jealous of him and then they tried to sell him so you know a lot of things happen so when we keep saying confession we need to be wise with our confession also so keep a confession before the lord uh, or in in the appropriate circles and hold fast to that confession so why is it that you know sometimes um we have to wait what is what is god's intention when we he um um you know gives us that time to wait building yeah building our faith we'll also see a scripture which says that when we wait upon the lord it actually um strengthens our character okay uh, it it builds up our character character is you know who we are um, in the depths of our being okay so god is more interested in our character um, than you know just the outcomes of let's say uh, you know our ministry or things like that so once our character is strong everything else will will um, glorify god but if our character is not strong uh, and we you know we um, are underdeveloped in our character it's very problematic okay uh, because even if we go to great heights we will not be able to glorify or um, you know honor god for simple example will be saul david and saul you remember saul god chose him to be the king and uh, god anointed him to be the king but so unfortunate he never kept up to god's expectations because in his character we can see couple of things like pride uh, disobedience um, you know uh, the the need for fame so there were so many things that he desired within himself uh, his character that finally god said you know i feel so sad i feel so sorry that i picked a man like saul what was the issue not that he was not strong or you know god picked a really um, strong personality saul he was he was a great leader right but the character is the problem so for us sometimes when we are waiting and it's so difficult it's because god is building our character character is very very important for god and when we have the right character we will be able to serve god in the right way so let's uh, go ahead and take a break now and uh, we'll come back in 10 minutes and continue on the same subject of um, patience thank you